and and Anas radiallahu anhu said we never uh, were more happier with the statement other more than this statement and he said فأنا uh, he said so verily I love Allah I love His Messenger and I love Abu Bakr and I love Omar and this is Anas radiallahu anhu and we would hope to be with Anas radiallahu anhu and he said and even though I haven't done the same actions that they've done but I hope to be with them on the day of judgment and so <coughs> when a woman is is imitating someone they should uh, ask themselves that are you willing to be with this person on the Day of Judgment? Because if you truly do love that person, you will be with them on the Day of Judgment because they'll be leading you in that direction that they've taken. If that's the highest person in your mind, then uh, you should be prepared to uh, be side by side, uh, side by side with them on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm. To find that out, you would ask a sister, for example, um, you know, I'll let you put a poster up in your room. Who would you like to put a poster up of? If you just gave them free will and you're not going to hit them or you're not going to give them, uh, you know, rip down their posters and stuff. A lot of uh, Muslim girls would run to the store and buy pictures of singers and actresses and models and put it up. And, and that's if they have women, they might even put up men pictures up too. But those are the things that are, that are there in their heart, the ones that they're looking for. And if it wasn't for that guidance, that they would be uh, completely uh, lost in that. And that needs to change. And so, inshallah, we're going to give you uh, maybe a few examples of some of the shining uh, examples that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the, in the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, uh, Sheikh Tariq Soydan has, has some tapes concerning, concerning this. It's called Nisa Khalidat. Speaking about women, one of the statements he makes in the beginning of the, of the tapes is that in his research of women that in his research of women that were outstanding and made like a huge difference he said from the from the early times there seems to be many many examples he said but as you go down in history the examples start slowing down until you get times where the muslims uh, you know went backwards and they and they started leaving their deen you'll see that that's when the women got oppressed and that's when they st they stopped excelling but the times when they excelled were when the community understood uh, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll look, for example, at the story of Musa alayhi salam. And in the story of Musa, there are uh, some women that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about around the story of Musa. Okay, I can think of four women. Who can tell me the four women that were around Musa alayhi salam? The four women. Okay, you're going to say all four? <laughs> Just three? Okay, go. His mother? His sister? Brown's wife? One more. His wife. His wife. Huh? Two ladies. What's the fifth one? Oh, two sisters. If you remember, in, um, if you're at the Khutbah Dar al Hijra two days ago, I mentioned uh, the story of Musa's mother, which is a very uh, powerful story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about, or how Pharaoh was going around uh, murdering all the boys, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, revealed to her that if you, if you fear for, the, for your son, then throw him in the water. And I had said in the Khutbah that who, which, which mother would do that for her son? Take a baby, put him in a basket, and throw him into the water. If, you, if you're afraid for him, then do this. And you'll see the strength of uh, the mother of Musa السلام, that she did it. And that through his journey that he had gone to the, the doorstep of Fir'aun and taken into the house and then not accepting any milk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had placed that upon him. And then his mother came back and now she was breastfeeding him and she was getting money for it. And she was doing it in the home of Fir'aun. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَرَدَدْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّي كَيْ تَقَرَّعِنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ وَلِتَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ That, you know, and we return him so that, you know, her eyes would, would cool down and, um, and she wouldn't be sad and that she would know that the promise of Allah is the truth. This is the, the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Indeed, many of our scholars that you'll see that they had strong mothers like that. And indeed, when, when I think of heroes, like at an Islamic school, if you want to see heroes, you see those mothers coming at 6 o'clock in the morning dropping their children off. Those are the real heroes. And a lot of times it's hard for the man to get up that early to, to drive down and drop off the kids, even though men do it 
you know, we do have men that do it, but a lot of times it's the women that are a lot of concern. They're taking charge of that. Also, you have this, uh, his sister, Musa's sister, alayhi salam, that when, um, that she had followed him and being obedient to his mother and also taking part in, in bringing back uh, Musa to his mother. You also have the example of Musa's wife where he had gone to Median and he saw the two, uh, the two girls trying to get water and then he had brought water for them and then he, he took his, his shade and then one of them came back to him فَجَاءَتُ إِحْدَاهُمَا and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned like how she was walking تَمْشِي عَلَى istihya that she was walking and this is you know, eventually going to be the, the wife of Musa a.s. that she would walk in modesty and this was something this honor and, and the modesty was something that was something very cherished to them something very cherished and in fact the Arab when they would murder their, uh, their young girls it was because of honor that they would murder them and they had gone to an extreme where they had so much care for their honor that they would choose to murder their daughter instead of you know something bad happening and their honor being ruined and they would kill them for this reason and so uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions her statement when she had gone to her father and she said, "Ya Abu, to stay jirhu in the khayra man stay jart al qawiyul amin." And in fact, even in business, when people make this uh, statement, they use like this quote that the best person that you can hire is al qawi, is the person who is strength and is capable of doing the work, al amin, and the trustworthy. And you have also the story of Asya, alayhi salam, and she was one of the best women that ever walked this earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مْرَأَةِ فِرْعَوْنَ That not only is she an example for the women, but she is an example for every single Muslim, male and female, of her iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, when she said, إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِي لِعِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ When she said, Oh Allah, build a home for me in Jannah next to you. وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And in fact, they tortured her to her till her death. And this is the dua she said on her deathbed as she went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we also have the example of Hajar alayhi salam and how in fact every time we go into Safa and Marwa and you have all these people going for Umrah the millions upon millions they're following the footsteps of Hajar alayhi salam as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam taught us between the Safa and Marwa and here her son was um, when Ibrahim alayhi salam left her and, and she made that famous statement that she said, you know, wh- why are you leaving us? Why are you doing this? And then she said, Allahu amaraka bihada. She, she said, did Allah command you to do this? Did Allah command you to leave us here? And he said, naam. And then, and then she said, idhan la yudayyana. That, that if this is the case, then Allah will not leave us to go astray. And so here she's in the middle of a desert and there was no Kaaba at that time. It was just a barren uh, plain. And then her son Ismail began thirsty and she had no milk to give him and they had no water and then she, so she went running to Mount Safa looking for the water and, and looking, climbing the mountain trying to find anywhere trying to see any, anybody try to get the water her son's there and if you know where, uh, where the Zemzem well is that, that's where Ismail was right next to the Kaaba and then she went to Marwa uh, and, and climbed that mountain looking for water and noticed the, you know, logically what she should have done is gone onto a mountain past that, go further looking in a different direction. But because, you know, her heart was, uh, was hurting for her son who was right there, she couldn't leave him. So what she did was she just went back and forth between Safa and Marwa seven times. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed uh, Ismail alayhi salam with, with the well of Zamzam. And then the life in Mecca began there. We also have the story of Maryam alayhi salam in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us um, how the angel had come to her. And even that angel, in fact, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّخَذَتْ مِن دُونِهِمْ حِجَابًا That, you know, she took a hijab or, or Allah alam how the tafsir goes, but it said that uh, she went to comb her hair. And in order to make her, you know, hair come out and stuff, she would go away from the people. And then the angel came to her at that time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions the purity of this uh, of uh, Maryam alayhi salam who is also one of the most uh, noble people to walk the earth. And how the mother of Maryam alayhi salam 
when she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know she made an oath 